This is a nonprofit, non denominational religious, scientific, and research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We are incorporated in the state of California in 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain foreign countries. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit as contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Saul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. And we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means this is the title Yahweh chose for himself. A modern investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language has any characters or letters in their alphabet that can produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. We have 
In this state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbol on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in that pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son. A super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. Three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe uh, is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have 10 primary aims or constitutional objectives for the Institute and they are as follows. One, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four, is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Five, to excapate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We'll have a prayer this morning by Dr. Catherine Smith. 
We'll have the scripture reading, which is Psalms 105th Division by Dr. Kathleen Banks. Let us bow our hearts and minds. Oh, gracious Master, we thank you, thank you, thank you so much for allowing us to be present this morning. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you open up our heart and our mind, that we may truly learn of thee the way you really is and actually exist. We ask that you bless the brethren that are here, and bless the brethren who could not attend, and those who had an innate desire to truly be present in one of your classes. All these and many blessings we ask, and we give thanks to thy own Son, Yahshua the Messiah, that the body say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading Psalms 100 and, Psalms 150th Division. Uh, it's going to be taken from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. Psalms 150 Division. Hallelujah. Praise El in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to open up the floor for a uh, testimony. If anybody would like to share some of the things that Yahweh has revealed unto them. Good morning again, class. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today is a new day in Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all rejoice. And I'm so truly thankful to be in class this morning. This is a school, and like the moderator said, but this school, unlike other schools that we remember being in, mm -hmm. uh, focuses on the spiritual rather than the physical. But we still read, teach, do our research, and investigate. But our testimony to the things, but ours testify to the things that are spiritual and that point us to Yahshua the Messiah, who is pure spirit and came from pure spirit. In pure spirit, it was like an abstract mm -hmm. uh, manifestation, manifestation. And then the abstract came down to this intermediate mm -hmm. uh, state where it could be seen, because it couldn't be seen at all in pure spirit, right. but it could be seen a little bit better in visions and revelations. Mm -hmm. Then it came down again where it could be seen, felt, touched, and everything else as a fleshly state, which was Yahshua the Messiah. There is a war going on in the world but the worst one, or the one that we need to be concerned about, is the war that's going on in us or in our minds. Mm -hmm. And that is the good at war with the bad. I think it's some scripture that talks about the warring in the minds. It's a war going on in our minds. And then it's another one about uh, principalities and powers in high places. I don't know if the same one talks about that or if it's two separate ones. Uh, Romans 7th chapter. It's, it's like we're wrestling our minds. It's a mm -hmm. war. In, excuse me. 
it's a warring going on in our minds of, 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 of uh, against, excuse me, good and bad, or just kind of something like that. Okay, here's one of them. Um, okay. Romans 7. So war going on in our minds. And we'll start about um, 14. Okay. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not for what I would. That I do not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, for the good I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Then I find a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Okay, so that's talking about that war going on and then this other one's says about uh, the wrestling of That's something about principalities and powers in high places. Mm -hmm. That's the other one. Okay. Ephesians 6 and 12. Okay. <coughs> Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, take upon you the whole arm of Elohim, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having overcome, to stand. Okay. So when we know the truth, the truth is righteous, mm -hmm. and the untruth or that lie is a lie. It's not true. So it's like the normal against the abnormal. So, uh, with that being said, I want to briefly touch on mental illness. Because, like, suicide is at the top mm -hmm. and rising mm -hmm. every day. So, what is mental illness? Can someone look up mental illness? I mean, it's everywhere. It's at the bus stop. It's walking <laughs> up and down the street next to his next door. It's just, it's, it's serious. It's, it's really, it's out of control. Mental illness is today. Okay, this is coming from Wikipedia. Okay. Mental illness, it took me to mental disorder. Okay. A mental disorder, also called mental illness or psychiatric disorder, mm. is a behavior or mental pattern that causes significant distress or impairment of personal functioning. Mm. Such functions may be persistent, relapsing, or remitting or occur, occur as a single episode. Many disorders have been described with signs and symptoms that vary mm -hmm. widely between specific disorders. Okay, so psych, psyche or whatever you want to call it, I think it's like a root word 
and it deals with the mind. And mm -hmm. we know that the mind deals with the brain. And then the brain <coughs> deals with the spirit. Because we got uh we got the brain, that's the most holy place. And then we got this cloud. So the brain is kind of like the cloud. We got this cloud sitting right here in the Ark of the Covenant. That's where Yahshua, that's where Yahweh, the spirit of Yahweh is dwelling. In this ark, right? Mm -hmm. And then we got this brain, this cloud right here. And then, it's all this is signifying right on this top line, the most holy place, right? right am I right, y'all? Yes. You got the drops. <laughs> okay, so, sight, mind, spirit. Let's see the spirit. Okay, and uh, they're also saying that there are psychological, can someone look up? the words psychological and psychology. There are some psychological factors relating to mental illness, but I want to get the definition to psychological and psychology, please y'all. Okay, I got psychology. Okay. Take, take it from the American Heritage Online. Mm -hmm. um, psychology, it's a noun. The science that deals with mental processes and behavior. Mm -hmm. Two, the emotional and behavioral characteristics of an individual, a group, or those engaged in a giving activity. Three, subtle tactical action or argument used to manipulate or influence another. Mm. Four, psychology the branch of metaphysics that study the soul, the mind, mm, and the, the relationship mind. of life okay. and mind to the function of the body. Okay. All right. So psychology is kind of like the study of the mind. Mm -hmm. And psychological means... Uh, do you just erase it with your finger? I didn't see that. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Carpet cleaner ate it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I just... <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Anybody find psychological? Psychology. Psychological. Psychological. P-S-Y-C-H-O-L-O-G-I-C-A-L. -L. I'm not taking, I'm taking it too fast, Anna. Psychology. Psychological. Uh, it's, well, it, I had got the definition. Got it. American too. Heritage Online. Uh, uh, psychological. It's an adjective mm -hmm. of or relating to psychology. Two, of relating to or arising from the mind or emotions. Mm -hmm. Three, influencing or intended to influence the mind or emotions. Four, of or being any of certain primary colors whose mixture may be subjectively conceived as producing other colors. Okay. So psychological really is like the reasoning of the mind. And then we got psychology as the study of the mind. So all these mental illness, uh, you know, conditions are mm -hmm. basically mental things or d things that deal with your mind. So... Uh, Fatal equal death. And then we got the end result of them having these psychological problems or this mental disorder is death. Just like Satan is going to give you death. Okay, these psychological factors that's affecting this mental illness, 
I'm just, it's a lot to write, so I'll just read it. But it's extreme or severe mood behavior. Violent reactions. Behavior is out of control. They have suicidal thoughts or tendencies. They have severe schizophrenia. Uh, we can look it up if we want to. to but sits, sits, uh, <laughs> sits, I can't even, schizophrenia. schizophrenia. They have severe schizophrenia. They have severe paranoia. They also have severe depression. So we said our brain was like a cloud. He said, our brain was just like a cloud. But this cloud that's, that our brain is symbolized as, it's, it's on the chart. It's like this little cloud that's in the Ark of the Covenant mm -hmm. that, that's showing Yahshua's, I mean, Yahweh's presence or his pure spirit, his presence in this Ark of the Covenant. Then we got this cloud, even though it's orange. We don't see orange clouds in the sky. But it's just showing that everything is inside of this pure spirit of Yahweh. And that Yahweh in pure spirit form is like a cloud. You know, like the clouds we see every day. But if you don't look up in the sky, you won't see the cloud. But I'm just saying, if you look up and see the cloud, it looks just like the little fluffy white mm -hmm. thing. It looks just like this cloud here. All these clouds that we see when we see them everywhere else. It's the same kind of, kind of cloud. The cloud is a cloud. You know, but our brain is like a cloud, but it doesn't have any particular form or shape. You know, any particular shape or form. It just sits inside this little brain, this mm -hmm. little bony, hard part of our head, which is called the skull. And that's where the brain is kept. Mm -hmm. So the brain is like the cloud because it has no particular form or shape. I mean, shape or form, but it's just inside that little hard, round case mm -hmm. that's holding and protecting our brain because if it was the brain would just be here because it don't have no particular shape or form. Right. There is a cure for a mental illness or a sick mind but the outcome like I said could be fatal or deadly. Mm -hmm. Okay it was by faith by the will of Yahweh Elohim that on June 6th he sent a man named Henry C. Kenley and he gave him the vision of life, which is what we see before us, or salvation. And this vision guarantees us salvation or eternal life so that our outcome won't be fatal or deadly, spiritually so. Mm -hmm. Can someone look up doomed? Please, the verse doomed. American Heritage Dictionary. Condemnation to a severe penalty. The last judgment. A predestined end in ruin or tragedy. A terrible fate. Disaster. Ruin. Extension. To condemn to ruination or death. To destine to an unhappy end. Okay, so the flesh is already doomed, and you can't escape death in this flesh. And if you happen by chance to get the nerve to kill yourself, that's why they say the suicide rate is on the high. It's on the it, it's at mm -hmm. the top of the mm -hmm. the the uh, it's at the top of the list, and it's rising too, along with mental illness. You got the suicide going on. And if, like I say, if you happen to get the nerve to want to kill yourself, uh, Yahweh calls you to die. Now, it ain't nothing you did, even though you cut your wrist, but you know, Yahweh did because you, you, know, you don't have the power to, to do that. So if you think you killed yourself, he still did. I'm saying that's a person mm -hmm. who committed suicide. So now we're down here where the outcome, like I said before, could be fatal or deadly. So to us spiritually, if we don't know where to find salvation or life, or we don't know how to find Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually, actually exists, the outcome 
will be fatal or deadly. Hallelujah. 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 Just a minute. Oh. I'd like to say good morning. Good, good morning. morning. And it is a honor and a privilege to have anything, a reasonable testimony um, of some of the things that Yahweh has revealed under me since being in attendance in this school. And um, I just wanted to, uh, <laughs> it's so funny, uh, but it just shows how the spirit uh, works. I said, you know, Yahweh, I really don't have no introduction to this. It just dropped right in. So the, he sent a vessel that did the, that did the preliminary work. Because uh -huh. <laughs> I was going to start with, um, it's an honor and a privilege, you know, because Yahweh has made these things known unto us. And as the vessel said, we, we might think that, oh, so-and-so, so-and-so, they committed themselves and this uh, committed suicide or did this or did that, mm -hmm. you know. But, but to really be able to understand that Yahweh is in total control. And that's incomprehensible. It is. Mm -hmm. That's why um, that, that's, that's a bone we're chewing on right now in the Institute is, you know, is he in control? Partially controlled. The big thing controlled, but not the little thing controlled. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought back on, and I, I didn't get a chance to look it up, but I, I do remember uh, when, when coming into the school, hearing lectures, the, the actual uh, lecture of Dr. Kenley, and then people repeating it. Uh, and he was talking about a man committing suicide. And he said, the man said, I just couldn't see no way out. Mm -hmm. So he took his life. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes you wonder uh, uh, about what, what veil drops in those cases that you, you are in something and you just can't see a way out. And the way out you choose is to just get out. Mm. You know, that is a bad state. Dr. Smith was, uh, Yahweh stirred her up about uh, the, the hell, the lake of fire, you know, where, where is it, what is it? Um, and Dr. Kinley was talking about that it's um, a state of consciousness. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so you can be in that turmoil mm -hmm. and think that um, taking, ceasing the flesh will end the turmoil. It's unfortunate. It's, it's, it's going on to the next phase. It's, it's on to the next phase. And a lot of times we'll say, um, well, I know coming up, they used to always talk about uh, money can't make you happy. You know, you can't, you can't buy happiness. You sure can't buy a whole lot. You know, especially... <laughs> When you you know just eking out you know and then, and then you get you, then you get you a little piece of pile of money or you yeah. be happy you you know where to work with it you be right. happy and grinning right. yeah. but then when you look at this now everything comes in threes we've had three major suicides of world renowned people mm -hmm. what took them to that point that they saw no way out. And we ain't talking about that these are people that are derelicts and people down on the street corner and right. stuff, you know, that, that you would figure that they'd be committing suicide they every day. Mm -hmm. and, but you know what? They, they tell you now that a lot of the alcoholism mm -hmm. and the drug addiction mm -hmm. is self-medication. Mm -hmm. That some people do have a mental illness and they are medicating themselves mm -hmm. with the alcohol and the drugs right. uh, rather than rather than taking the medicine from the doctors because it does have side effects. They gain weight or this, that, you know, make them sleep, you know. It's a bad state. I'm not trying to pass judgment on anybody. It's a bad state. Uh, one that came up was Anthony Bourdain. And thinking back on what Dr. Smith wanted to study, you know what his show is called? Parts unknown. <laughs> she wanted to go into well, where is it? <laughs> what is where is it on the chart? How does it hook up? Unknown. P parts unknown. And that's 
what this show is, Parts Unknown. And it is a very popular show. I didn't, I didn't, but it's been on a number of years on CNN. And it says that um, uh, Anthony Bourdain, this comes from CNN because that's what he was on. Uh, Anthony Bourdain, whose madcap memoirs about the dark corners of the New York restaurants made him a celebrity and touched off nearly two, a two-decade career mm -hmm. as a globe-trotting television host was found dead in his hotel room in France on Friday. Mm -hmm. And he was 61. Right. Mm -hmm. So what he would do is, and I, you know, the, you know how when somebody passed and they're celebrities, they have all these little clips and stuff. Right. And he would say that what he did to make his show interesting was, okay, like for example, he go to Marrakesh. Well, one, we might not have heard of that since school. You know, Marrakesh, or you know, we old enough to Marrakesh mm -hmm. Express was a old old song. Yeah. But he'll go to these places. Parts unknown. Mm. So he's so he's giving you geography, and then he would say, um, "Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your life. Tell me about your purpose. What are you? What are your drives?" Mm -hmm. You know. So he get the people to talk, mm -hmm. and then get into and the food. So it wasn't just you know. And here's how they cook a lamb. He gave you a whole digest. Okay. Of that area, how it looked, mm -hmm. how the people thought mm -hmm. in those places. So mm -hmm. that that he was really, uh, he had a really really unique uh, TV show. The third person was you mentioned it, Kath, Kate, Kate Spade. Spade. Mm -hmm. She wasn't no poor person either. Mm -hmm. no. Fashion designer. Fashion designer. Mm -hmm. The New York City Medical Examiner's Office said Thursday that the death of Kate Spade, the designer, who was found in her apartment this week, was a suicide. Miss Spade, 55, had suffered from severe depression. Her husband, Andy Spade, said Wednesday. Couldn't see no way out. Mm -hmm. All of that money and couldn't see no way out. Mm -hmm. okay. Now here's one just jumped out when I was doing, doing this. Y'all always say, here's the other one. <laughs> The younger sister of Queen Maxima of the Netherlands was found dead at her home in Argentina. Uh, Inez Zorakita was 33. She cut off at 33. Uh, and is understood to have <coughs> taken her, her own life. Now, this kind of backs into where I also wanted to go. Now, here's someone whose sister is a queen. Mm -hmm. They were from Argentina. I did a little research. Yeah. From Argentina and uh, was then the crown prince, married Maxima. So the woman that passed, Inez, that's her sister. Mm -hmm. So her brother-in-law now is a king. Mm -hmm. Her sister is a queen. Mm -hmm. Now, you, now, of course, now they don't make her a princess, but you, you are, by marriage, a part of the royal family, and that couldn't dissuade the turmoil going on mm -hmm. in her head that she took her own life. Mm -hmm. Now, this goes into uh, was talking with the visitor that was here about the marriages because we watched the royal marriage. Now, evidently, it's something in that royal that royal marriage. Um, I want you to get. Uh, over there where is the parable and Yahshua says that uh, about uh, he bid those to come to the wedding and and they would not come
Okay, try Matthew 22. Matthew 22? Yeah, sorry, one. Matthew 22 and 1. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, <coughs> mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. So they asked him certain questions and followed mm -hmm. after him and calling him good master. He said, Why you call me good master? You know, he's just really chiding with them. So he speaks to the multitude in parables. And I, somebody had covered that and used to cover it a long time ago. But see, he, to his disciples, I didn't know. I can't speak for anybody else. I, I just thought the definition of disciple before coming to him meant follower. Because they were the followers of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But we come in here and we find out the disciple is a student. Mm -hmm. So... He speaks to his students plainly, but to the multitude, he speaks in parables. And you could just imagine that little cartoon character. Mm, that one just goes right up over their head. Mm -hmm. So they're asking him a question. He's not going to speak straight to them. He, this is how he does it. He says, the kingdom of what? Heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. It's like. We learned about mm -hmm. similitudes and right. similes when we was in school. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like a what? Unto a certain king. A certain king. Mm -hmm. Now, we now he's talking about a certain king. We, we trying to figure out, is it ne King Nebuchadnezzar, King, <laughs> king Herod, King... Mm -hmm. No, it's a certain king. That's mm -hmm. Yahweh himself, uh -huh. king of kings. Mm -hmm. Read. Which made a marriage for his son. He What? He made a marriage. Mm -hmm. And you know, those marriages... Uh, were called arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, I was just thinking about it. Maybe I won't get too scattered. But it, it was a class thing. It was a class thing. Because mm -hmm. I know, even in my generation, they be talking about, don't be unequally yoked. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't hear the old folk talking about that kind. Don't be, don't be you unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you going to school with different people. And, you know, and uh, they their mother was an attorney, they father a judge, mm -hmm. you know, shoot, it wasn't long before they got them out of the ghetto school mm -hmm. and sent them to another school. Why? Because see, you be get, getting one of them little girls that's unequally yoked. Right. So they sent, they sent them to private school. Mm -hmm. Now what you got in the private, now, now, see, back then, you had to pay for the private school. See, it wasn't no vouchers. So see, they kept that class structure mm -hmm. separate. Right. So you go on to junior high school and high school with people of your own class. So yeah. then what you ten have a tendency to do is marry yeah. in your own class. Right. Now, we see that uh, <coughs> when you look at those different programs and stuff, and you see about the, the father is a tycoon, he's rich, mm -hmm. uh, daughter is, is, is going to inherit all of that. What does he do? He's, now, she's already going to be rich. She's going to have more than she could spend in a lifetime. Right. But he steers her right to somebody that's got something equal. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing is, they are looking for mm -hmm. a mate mm -hmm. that is suitable. <laughs> now, that goes way back to Genesis. I don't want to ramble off into that though. <laughs> but when you in Genesis, when uh, Yahweh made all the animals and all the animals mm -hmm. came up to Adam and, and whatsoever, a, 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 whatsoever Adam named them, that's mm -hmm. what they were. Mm -hmm. But he had to make a mate, right. a help meet. And then we figured that's somebody mm -hmm. to help him in the garden. No, <laughs> that help meet was a suitable mm -hmm. mate. A, suit, a suitable match. She had a, she had a duty to perform, mm -hmm. so Yahweh made her specially for that duty. So it's a type and a shadow in these arranged marriages that they are trying to uh, uh, hook you up with someone that is suitable. Read. Mm -hmm. And it, sent forth. Wait a minute, go back to cert, the certain king. Okay, the, the, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, mm -hmm. which made a marriage for his son. He made a marriage for his son, but mm -hmm. all we have to do is go back to Adam. Didn't he have to he make Eve? Mm -hmm. Okay, he had to make Eve. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she was suitable. Right. Okay, when you talk about uh, Israel, now this is a situation sometimes, you know, uh, out of Egypt have I called my son, but yet when he brought 
Israel out, we use a pro, pro a female pronoun, don't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. Although he said, I brought my son out, we use a female. Why? Because when he was on Mount Sinai, what did he do? He spoke down. Mm -hmm. And she said, all that Yahweh has said, mm -hmm. what? We yes, will do. Will. So he married her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was his bride. And in Jeremiah, he said, oh, I brought you out on eagle's wings. Mm -hmm. it, uh, although I was a what? Husband mm -hmm. unto you. Right. But my covenant, what? The marriage, mm -hmm. marriage vows you broke. So you see all of these types and shadows of the wedding. Okay, read. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. There were certain people that were bidden. They had an invitation. Mm -hmm. They just don't say, hear ye, hear ye, just everybody, you know, come in. Mm -mm, they don't do that. Invitation is one of them, the invitation only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and tell them that you're coming. RSVP. <laughs> Read. And they would not come. But they wouldn't come. So who is that talking about? Yahweh sent his prophets unto the Jews or the Israelites. They would not heed. And they didn't treat those. They didn't say, well, just go ahead on. They treated them prophets bad. Read. Again, he sent forth other servants. Mm -hmm. saying, other servants. Other prophets saying, mm -hmm. tell them. Nephew, them ones we don't read about. <laughs> we got a, a Micah, the little book, they call them minor prophets. Ain't no major and minor in Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Read. Tell them which are bidden. Tell them which are bidden. Read. Behold, mm -hmm. I have prepared my dinner. Mm -hmm. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. Mm -hmm. And all things are ready. Mm -hmm. Come unto the marriage. Mm -hmm. Come to mm -hmm. the marriage. Mm -hmm. Read. But they made light of it mm -hmm. and went their way. Ain't, ain't, ain't no big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one to his farm, uh -huh. another to his merchandise. Mm -hmm. They went all about their business. Mm -hmm. Read. And the remnant took his servant. Oh my goodness, that's even worse. Because mm -hmm. them that stayed around did what? Took the servants. Mm -hmm. And entreated them spitefully and slew them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. Okay, now this one, because that's going off in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But he made a marriage mm -hmm. right. for his son. Mm -hmm. Yahweh made Israel. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to back into it, so if I kind of get this wrong, forgive me for it. It was, it saves my head. Um, Yahweh calls them. You, you go to the calling out of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Even even when you get those stories, you know, who did Abraham marry? Mm -hmm. A family member, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. When it was time for his son, we don't, we don't read about, because um, uh, he, he had driven out the bondswoman and her son. So mm -hmm. you don't read about him making no marriage for him. But when it's time for his son Isaac, mm -hmm. to whom the, the promise mm -hmm. is a type of, right. he sent back to the near kinsman mm -hmm. to get a wife for Isaac. Right. So mm -hmm. what does that do? That's, that's, keep, that's keeping it in the family. Mm -hmm. we, we know that bloodline, <laughs> keeping it in the family. So you over and over and over and over and over. You can go, you can go over to, and the one we like to talk about is uh, in the book of uh, Ruth, mm -hmm. how that you had... They was, they was in the captivity. Mm -hmm. They came back. They came back with, Na uh, she came back, Ruth came back with Naomi. Uh -huh. Naomi, oh, she an old widow. Right. But Ruth, a young widow. Mm -hmm. So what did they do? They go to what? Near mm -hmm. kinsman. Mm -hmm. Even though she's a Moabite, mm -hmm. she's attached to Naomi mm -hmm. as a daughter-in-law. Right. And Naomi's treating her like a daughter because right. the mother wants to say, no, we stand in Moab. You mm -hmm. call on. That's a long journey mm -hmm. for her to go back to her near kinsman. Mm -hmm. So what? It took a near kinsman, mm -hmm. Boaz, right. to spread his, spread his skirt uh -huh. over her. He mm -hmm. covered the similitudes of her sins and her faults mm -hmm. with his skirt. And what? Mm -hmm. Made her suitable to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. That's talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But the father, this, and I was trying to get that, if no man comes, to, can you find it? No man comes to the father, but... But no man goes to the son except the father. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that Matthew 11? Matthew 11 and 14. Yeah. <clears throat> Matthew 11 and 20. Seven? No. 
Is it? I mean, no one know. north of Summit Farm? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. Avenue 27. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And turning to his disciples, he said... And talking to that multitude of parables. These right. are the disciples. These are the <coughs> folk that he's drawn up to himself. Read. Mm -hmm. All things are <coughs> delivered unto me of my Father. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he's got all the inheritance. All things. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about the Yahweh, the nine divine attributes, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, <coughs> power, and strength. Now, true enough, we say in part, but you know what happens? A carnal mind is a terrible thing to waste. Our carnality can jump up real quick and think in part meant he left strength behind. <laughs> that he left one of the nine behind. No, it didn't take all of the knowledge mm -hmm. from the pure spirit state to take on a shape and a form. Mm -hmm. Didn't take all of the wisdom that ever exists mm -hmm. to take on the shape and form. But whatever was in the put it say whatever was in the cloud or the pure spirit state was in the shape and form. Mm -hmm. And whatever was in the shape and form, which was also in the pure spirit state. Mm -hmm was in Yahshua the Messiah, because it says in him dwelt the fullness of the supernal nature of Godhead in bodily form. So it's still the attributes, no lessening of power, no lessening of, of anything else. Read. And no man mm -hmm. knoweth the Son mm -hmm. but the Father. No man knows the Son but the Father. Mm -hmm. Neither knoweth any man the Father Save the son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got it locked up between mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. Read. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. John 14 and 6. Yeah, okay. Yahshua mm -hmm. said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Yahshua mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. stops at Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, we've got these, wet, these marriages. So when I looked up this, you know, because I was interested, I said, this, this is a, because we only think about Queen Elizabeth and Charles, that's, that's all we hear. But you have some more royal families that, that are still in existence and still sitting on the throne in these other countries. So Netherlands is one. Now, we all looking at the thing with Megan but, uh, uh, and, and her family situation. But y'all always say, I overturn, I overturn what? I overturn it. So we weren't watching the wedding and the, and the scuttlebutt in the Netherlands. So Megan was just a repeat of some stuff that had happened. Hmm. When um, Maxima uh, met the prince, he didn't tell her he was a prince. He didn't even use his whole name. So it didn't ring a bell. Mm -hmm. So after they dated a while, then he tells her his whole name mm -hmm. and his whole story. Mm -hmm. See, he reveals himself. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. she can't get to the royal family, what? But, but by, by him. him. That, that mm -hmm. would be whatever hope <coughs> she has mm -hmm. is in him. Mm -hmm. As the crown prince mm -hmm. who is going to have inheritance from the father. Mm -hmm. See, I'm stumbling with it. But aren't we called fellow heirs yeah. mm -hmm. with Yahshua the Messiah? We have an inheritance. Right. Right. So him being a crown prince, <laughs> he was the one next in line. Uh, actually, it was his mother, Beatrix, uh, to accept the head position. Mm -hmm. Now, those of us who, because <coughs> see, they, they, they uh, whitewash history. Um, when we were coming along, they made a point of telling us them Nazis skedaddled after the war was over. They skedaddled out of Germany. And they went on down, and one country that just welcomed them was Argentina. Mm. And they hid out down there in Argentina and had their money transferred and stuff. When they got down there, and they set up housekeeping. But they still, you can't change a demon's mind by changing his geographical location. So that same kinds of, of, of thought processes manifested itself in Argentina. That's why when you, when you look at them shows of Vita, see they be, they be whitewashing that too. Uh, because those military people and the people that were in power, uh, they were doing torture on the people that 
weren't going along with them. And some of them torches, is holdovers from the SS torches back there in Germany, in, in Nazi Germany. Why? Because you got them same old folk, same old demons in power. So, now, I'm quoting from the source. I don't know nothing about this man. So, I ain't saying mm. nothing. I'm just reading what was on the internet. Mm. Her father uh, died a year ago at the age of 86. He had served as agriculture minister during Argentina's brutal military dictatorship. So, that means he was part of the ruling elite. He was part mm. of cabinet level minister <coughs> during a brutal military dictatorship, a link that caused mm -hmm. some controversy in the Netherlands and led to a debate in the Dutch Parliament before his daughter married the Crown Prince. So that means they mm -hmm. had to examine her. Kind of sound like take out the lamb and examine mm -hmm. it. See, and, and they're examining to see if she's suitable. Mm -hmm. Then this came up about her father. Mm -hmm. And it was an issue. So what they did was, they would not allow the father to attend the wedding. Mm -hmm. The mother says, if the father can't go, I won't go. Mm -hmm. So neither one of them went. Mm -hmm. And that girl kept right on stepping. And I'm pointing here at Yashua. She kept right on stepping. Why? Because she had her eye on the prize, which, mm -hmm. was the, which was the crown prince at that time. Mm -hmm. And all that family scuttlebutt stuff mm -hmm. just yeah. had, had to leave it behind. Mm -hmm. Now, that... That passed us by. Yeah, I slid off of mental illness. That passed us by. But it did pass us by with Megan because her, her debris washed right on up on the shores. <laughs> Pardon me, I will say this. It seemed like the father and that line of the family was two, I ain't talking about economically, I'm talking about mentally, was two steps above trailer park trash. That's what it seemed like to me. Because as as she, as it became uh, public that she was dating this prince, everything was kind of quiet for a while. But then as it got closer and closer to adjoining, which means now you're going to be incorporated, you know, he's going to cover you with his mantle and accept you into his household, which is a royal household mm -hmm. all then they became they became all kind of issues <laughs> got so much junk here mm. this one I'm gonna do real quick because I don't want to I don't want to make this a big old issue thing okay I didn't even know I didn't even know <coughs> about a Christian the Ninth, yeah, of Denmark. This is a family tree of sovereign and consorts. I looked up. I said, "What's the connection between the royal families?" This is what it gave me on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. But we have heard of <laughs> Queen Victoria mm -hmm. and Prince Albert. Right. And this current queen is a descendant from Queen Victoria. Hmm. Now, between Christian and Denmark. And Queen Victoria, all of these others are royal family members who in their time were sovereigns. Uh, let's see, where is it? Sophia Prussia, I, don't, I ain't too familiar with her. Um, how about this one? Nicholas II of Russia. That's that's the one who was executed. We all see that movies about Anastasia and mm -hmm. maybe she was a princess that got away. Nicholas and uh, one of the descendants of Queen Victoria was his wife. So all of those go back. So I'm not trying to belabor it or make this into a, 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 a big history lesson. The, look, Greece is even in there. Greece. Mm -hmm. Denmark. Norway, <coughs> Wales, uh, Germany, Prussia, mm -hmm. Edinburgh, that's, that's England, um, 
Queen Victoria, Alfred, Duke of, of Coburg, and you're you going to find that with her husband, Albert. Uh, that's uh, Prussia or a uh, part of Germany. All of this is to show us a bloodline. It's a family affair. Mm -hmm. So the, that's the point <clears throat> of, if we're going to let you come into the family, to this self-contained bloodline, then we have to examine you to see if you're worthy. Mm -hmm. Now, in the old days, uh, they talk because I'm watching this thing on Netflix that you could only, by law in England, marry a nobleman or a noble lady, which means they had to be of an earl, a duke, uh, you know. Uh, <coughs> and that's why there was so much inbreeding because if you were a crown prince, they would expect you to go and find a crown <coughs> prince, even though they was cousins, second cousins, third cousins, right. you know, from some other king and queen, then you bring them back, keeping that bloodline all together. So eventually they just said you no longer have to marry a prince to a princess and vice versa, uh, but choose one that's suitable. Okay, and I'm, I'm kind of jumping. When Charles, who is a crown prince, he old as the Dickens now, but he was young and fresh when he married Diana. <laughs> uh, when it was time for him, they told him, it's time for you to settle down, stop all this dating, find you a bride. That was a suitable one. It was almost like, almost like uh, with Israel. How in the world could Israel find all them perfect lambs? <laughs> See, there was, there was a little lamb that was set aside. And there's some controversy <laughs> about it. But see... Um, Dr. Wakefield had us watching every jot and tittle because he said it's pointing to something. They were, they were arguing about where they're going to give her a physical examination to verify was she a virgin. Why? Because her progeny would be heir to all, would be heir to the royal throne. So they examined that girl, all of her, you know, she couldn't have no dance of skeletons in her closet and stuff. You know, just as, it, and even to look at her face in that wedding and see the naivety, mm -hmm. how naive she was, you know, and, and to thinking this is a fairy book wedding. I have married my prince, and there she was. So she was truly suitable. And I just think about, I went back to get the video, because sometimes you say, well, it, I, my mind might have slipped, because we were uh, going through how that. Uh, and Isaiah said, I saw Yah in the king in the year King Isaiah died, I saw Yahweh high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And that's what we kept hollering when she got out of the car. Now I didn't get it until I mean I saw it, but to hear the commentator on it, and they had gone back and they were talking about how much weight she had lost, had lost. Uh, five inches off of her waist and they just kept making different bodices that you know fastened into the bottom of the dress and they just finally had to just sew her into it she had lost so much weight even at the last fitting mm -hmm. they sewed her into it and she kept on saying when they, when they were making it I want more train I want more train I want more train I thought it was just a train it was her veil and her train was all that white stuff mm -hmm. that was there. And she wanted more and more and more and more. They said it was so much. It was just all bunched up in the carriage with her. And when she got out, then this camera zoomed in and showed all the wrinkles mm -hmm. that had been made from everything being crunched up. And she just, you know, they smoothed on out mm -hmm. and straightened that thing out. And she drug that long train up in there. And it was like, Yahweh, here you are. Your train fills the temple. Why? That's one that they say is suitable. And when she married Prince Charles, they, they said... Uh, She's a duchess of, you know, uh, he's, prince, he's prince of Wales. And it's a whole thing about titles. If you're interested, look it up. Sometimes she could be a princess. This is how it goes. When you're not really a born royal, if you're with your husband, he's a prince, you're a princess. If not, you just carry the family thing because he was Duke of Wales or something like that. So 
But the whole world called the Princess Die. They called her Princess mm -hmm. Die, even when she had divorced him and was running around with somebody else. They still called her Princess Die. But the royal title and any inheritance, and I'm pointing here, comes from the father, or, or from the father to the mm -hmm. son. So any hope we have. Eternal, there's none of the name given among men, whereby man can be named. I don't know what these things are. Save in the name of Yahshua. Of Yahshua the Messiah. So everything goes to Yahshua the Messiah. Now, that is a royal wedding of somebody that's suitable. Now, there's another kind of wedding. And Dr. Harris had, had, had brought this up. And it's called a left-hand marriage or a morganatic marriage. <laughs> Which means you you are unequally yoked and there's some stench on you. Okay? Now, in our lifetime, we saw that. Princess Di in her Princess Diana in her different interviews said that they were there were three people in the marriage. And when her and Charles got got really bad, the Queen tried to counsel them, they tried to get them counseling. But she said it was three people in the marriage from day one. And that third person was Camilla. So here you got a storybook wedding. The whole world loved it. But you got this woman that won't let the prince go. Mm -hmm. And keeps the relation, this outside relationship going to the extent. And then Diana admitted that she had some by that point too. So... There's a stench on Camilla because the people love Diana mm -hmm. and they looked at her as the woman that broke up the storybook mm -hmm. wedding. Mm -hmm. So now Diana's dead. <laughs> Ain't no hope no remarriage. It's over. So now he's free to marry Camilla and the whole kingdom goes in an uproar. You know, you never see, we see it over here, you know, it went into an uproar about Camilla. And that she wasn't going to, they weren't even going to give her no title. They argued. Parliament, just like it said about this man in Argentina. Parliament argued about what will we call her. And it came out that, I got it in here. I got it in here. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere in here. It says, uh, Camilla will never... Be the princess. Mm -hmm. She'll never have that title. So her title doesn't even match up with Charles's title. And then it was, you know, of course now both of them now, they're well beyond the age of children anyway. Mm -hmm. But that became an issue too. Line of succession. Would they possibly be, if, if peradventure William and all of his children died, who would be in the line of succession? Mm -hmm. Morganatic. It'll never be, you'll never have a name. Your children will never sit on the throne. That sounds like the mystery of iniquity. And his bride, you got nothing coming. All you got is the man. But, but none of the, um, what you call it? The, 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 the inheritance. The inheritance, the true inheritance, or the regal, see? Pointing to Yahweh, king of kings, throne of thrones. So when Megan... Poor thing. <laughs> it became trailer park trash. Her father is estranged from you know from the family. Ain't been around since she was young. We didn't we didn't we don't witness stuff like that. If it ain't happened to us, it's happened to friends, down the street, family members. We know about that. And then when you get ready to have your wedding, you know that it's supposed to be your father that gives you away. Here come here come the mess. Your father ain't done nothing for you. Just mess. Just mess. Tradi now you're talking about tradition. <laughs> you married into the royal family. You're talking about tradition mm -hmm. with a capital T. Tradition is your father walks you down the aisle. We don't want no part of him or the uh, the, the stepchildren or the half brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. yeah, that whole side of the family you're trying to disannul. In other words, you're trying to write yourself a new history. You can't. You can't. Because the more you try to cover up stink, the more it just rises to the surface. <laughs> so 
Then they said, well, her mother can walk her down the aisle. Now, I'm not talking crazy stuff. I watch Sky News sometimes two or three hours a day. It's just playing in the background while I'm doing something. I'm listening to them debating. Probably and everybody else got into it. When they said the mother was going to walk her, that's totally unsuitable by tradition. Because it's supposed to be the father the man. that has, has agreed to, in essence, made this marriage and turns the bride or presents the bride <laughs> to the son. So for her, for them to even bring up some old tech head stuff like your mother, and you talking about that's some ghetto mentality. I ain't, I'm just ranting now. I don't think, Catherine, have you seen one? I don't even think I've seen a ghetto marriage where a mama uh, no. brought the child down. To, they got somebody, the cousin, mm -hmm. the cousin Petey. Oh, he was a male. Yes, right, and man. they were scuffling. They were scuffling when they finally got to that point. <laughs> They were saying Philip. I didn't know why they was talking about Philip, worried about Philip. That's when I zoomed in, they were trying to find a man. Well, Philip had just had hip surgery. Philip couldn't hardly get himself. They didn't know whether he could make it to the marriage. Let no walk her that distance. Then the mother, the queen, put an end to it. You're talking about authority, not queen or king. She said, Charles, that's the Son's father, you will present her mm. to the son. So it's that thing of the father and the son, the father and the son working together. Then the, you know all this thing is going back and forth. Then the father, then they say, "Well, get your father." And then the, the see trailer park trash. They get in touch with the Pavarotti. They sell. Now look, they say that the palace asked them, "Do you need any help with the Pavarotti?" In other words, we'll handle all media relations through here. Mm -hmm. Everything will, that's, that's control. Mm -hmm. The father controlling everything. We're going to control the horizontal and the vertical. Mm -hmm. You just keep saying no comment. I'd refer you to the mm -hmm. Windsor. Mm -hmm. They said we don't need no help. Mm -hmm. Why do they need no help? Because they sold their story to the Pavarazzi for what? Some money. Had him looking like a fool. He in the library trying to look up something on England. He ain't got nothing to say. Go in there, walk her down the aisle and get out of here. That's all they wanted him for. And he out there in the gym going to work out and stuff. When it hit, then the daughter said, I'm the one that told him to do it. The two of them. Trailer park trash. Then when the world turned on him for it, <laughs> then they say, okay, then he say, well, my heart. And this is, well, that's all like old fools and slow of heart. Or, you know, hey, you, get, you are unsuitable. You are unsuitable to participate. So here's the crown prince, Philip, this, uh, walks her down the aisle and presents her to his son. So I was looking at her train. I, I went back and I looked up some of them. Ain't nobody had a train like Diana. Not not mm -hmm. even Elizabeth, the queen sitting on the throne, had one as long as Princess Diana. So that's showing that that suitable one. Mm -hmm. How Yahweh brought Israel out. If it was 603,550 men of war, not including women and children, Catherine, that's a long train. That's a long train coming up there through the Red Sea, coming out here into the wilderness of Sinai. And then what does Yahweh do? He gives them, what, three days to clean up. They were talking about how all of that stuff. See, we couldn't see it because uh, uh, they didn't have... Uh, the media didn't have access like they have now mm -hmm. of all the backstage and the right. in and outs and her talking to the different designers and her preparations and the, mm -hmm. and the oils. Because it even said Diana had a stain on her wedding dress mm -hmm. was from the perfumes that she put on that day. Mm -hmm. See that? Three days! Mm -hmm. Wash your clothes mm -hmm. and clean up. Mm -hmm. Perfume yourself mm -hmm. and then present yourself unto Yahweh so that he can marry you. Mm -hmm. So what makes us, we got a stench, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. What makes us suitable mm -hmm. is only the Holy Spirit within mm -hmm. covers us, just like a Boaz covered uh, uh, Ruth mm -hmm. with his garment and made her suitable. Right. See, the, 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 there was another near, near kinsman that should have redeemed. He said, what? No, I, uh uh I ain't going to mingle right. my inheritance mm -hmm. with this woman, this Moabite woman. Right. Boaz said, I'm going to take her. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take her 
and she gonna be suitable. And mm -hmm. you know what Yahweh did? Out of the bloodline mm -hmm. of Boaz mm -hmm. and uh, Ruth came Obed, and Obed, and Obed mm -hmm. begot Jesse, and Jesse, and Jesse but God David. See, it was just like that thing out of Queen Victoria. Here come that line. Come, here comes David, the king of Israel, and Yahshua the Messiah. It's mm -hmm. called the what? Rule of David. Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> but it's all it's all on the internet. It's all about a royal wedding, and that's what Yahweh is getting ready to do for us. So all the debating, I, I, I'll say all the debating. And if there's suicide and, and mental illness and mm -hmm. mental distress in the world, mm -hmm. there's spiritual distress going on. But folks, mm -hmm. if we could concentrate mm -hmm. that there, we are getting ready for a wedding. Mm -hmm. it, uh, there was different people was saying, you know, I, I, there was, you know how they go in the room, they get ready to get dressed. I heard some women say, don't come in here with that foolishness and mm -hmm. stuff. Talking about this and Jake and Jack and who they don't come in here. That should be our, our frame of mind. With ourselves. With ourselves when that stuff comes. I'm in the frame of mind. I'm putting my perfume on. I'm getting my, I want some more train on my dress. I'm, I'm looking forward. This little line right here. I'm looking forward unto Yahshua the Messiah. The song saying I won't turn back now. With those words I thank you. Hallelujah. And our next week is going to be Dr. Speak will be Dr. Catherine Smith. <laughs> Like say good afternoon to the class. Good afternoon. And uh, I'm truly thankful to Yahweh for the things that He have allowed me to hear. I'm glad He even let us get here because we were stuck on the express. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, I'm just thankful that He uh, give me one more time to come uh, and to learn about something about Him the way He really is and actually exists. And in listening to the previous vessels, you know, um, there's it's so many things that come to mind, but Let's uh, go back, if you will, to, um, um, we had looked up um, mental illness. And um, when Yahshua the Messiah was walking around on the earth plane, and you had these different scribes and Pharisees that was coming to him, trying to trap him. And uh, they would be asking all these different questions. And they would, one of the questions was, it says, okay, this man, he married this woman. And then the other yeah. man, he married the woman. And the other man, it was five or seven people that married mm -hmm. this woman. Mm -hmm. Said, well, and I don't know where that scripture is. Well, whose wife is she going to be? You know, and uh, he went on to explain to them. See, everybody, what we have now is, is looking at this thing from a natural standpoint. But get uh, Romans. 119 and 20. And then um, let's go over here to what the previous lesson was talking about over there in Matthews. I think it was what the 24, 24 and, and 1. Um, and just to look at a, at a few things, but let's get Romans first because all the things that have been talked about and shared with us is that why are why are these things being presented to right. you in the manner or way that they are being presented to you? And in order for you to understand something, in the previous lesson before she got off the floor, she pointed right here. And uh, the way, the truth, and the life. And that's what you find over there in John 14 and 6. So what he's letting you know that if you want to know him the way he really is naturally exists, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, no man, <coughs> excuse me, coming to the Father but by me. So you have to be Coming this way to Yahshua. Well, how are you going to know him? Romans 119, please read. <clears throat> because that which may be known of Yahweh. Now, over here, let's go up to 16. Let's go up to 1 and 16. Because what we want you to know is that Yahshua have given us uh, some things to know about him. And uh, these things are so, it's necessary for you to know him and to know about him that you might inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah. He said with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. And the first vessel talked about it at the end of the day. We're going to take this flesh off. So what we are after is to inherit that eternal life right now while we got this flesh on. Read please. For I am not ashamed of Now this is the apostle Saul and he says, I am not ashamed, read. 
of the glad tidings of the Messiah. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Read. For it is the power of Yahweh. It's the power of Yahweh, read. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. So if you're looking for salvation, then it's the, this gospel is the power of Yahweh unto salvation, read. To everyone that believes. It said to everyone that believes. So if you have salvation to everyone who believed, then the opposite would be damnation to everybody who don't believe. Read, please. To the Jew first. Oh, read, please. And now, see, excuse me. Those, the Jews was the one that was supposed to carry this teaching to all the other nations because the oracles of Yahweh was committed unto them first and foremost. You see, read, please. And also to the Greek. Read. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh uh -huh. revealed from faith to faith. Read on, please. As it is written. As it is written, read. The just shall live by faith. By faith. Read on. For the wrath of Yahweh. Now it said, for the wrath of Yahweh, read. Shall be revealed. It from didn't say it might be. It says shall be revealed, read. From heaven. Uh huh. Against all impiety. Now look, if you look up the word impiety for me, read on. Now it said the wrath of Yahweh shall be revealed, what? From heaven. From heaven, read. Against all impiety mm -hmm. and unrighteousness of men uh -huh. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness, read. Because that which may be known because of Yahweh. That which may be known of Yahweh is manifest, is manifest or made known, read, in them. Read, please. For Yahweh has showed it unto For them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them, read. By the invisible things of him. Now it said the, the invisible things of him. Now Yahweh pure spirit. Yahweh take on the scripture shape and form. Yahweh manifest in the flesh. The first vessel talked about pure spirit intermediary state and then come on down into the concrete that which was back here here and here is the self same spirit read please by the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are uh -huh. clearly seen uh -huh. being understood read. by the things that are made uh -huh. even his eternal power uh -huh. and supernal nature read. so that they are without excuse so the things that were spoken about this morning was giving you natural things to point you up to spiritual things. Now, what talks about the impiety and unrighteousness of men? Impiety, please. Read. From the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary. Uh-huh. Impiety. Mm-hmm. The quality or state of being impious mm -hmm. or reverence. Read. An impious act. Read. Okay, American Heritage Dictionary. Uh, one, the quality or state of being impious. Mm -hmm. An impious act. Three, undutifulness. Undutifulness? Impious. Because, oh, see, this, this is what it's done got down to. You know, because a lot of times people think, oh, they just stuffing, trying to push this down, folks. Throw talking about Yahweh, Elohim. No, this was what was given from the beginning. The Lord God and Jesus Christ is the one who done strayed off, you see, and, and, and calling him out of his name. <coughs> Read. See, I'm pious, and it's really, it's like disrespect. Pious. This, read. This is pious. So, impious is the opposite of this. Okay. Earnestly compliant uh -huh. in the observance of religion, reverent or devout, mm -hmm. showing or characterized by religious devotion, mm -hmm. expressive of or used in religious devotion. Okay. Two, done for the benefit of others or with the intention of encouraging good. Sincere, mm -hmm. but wishful. Okay, that's not uh, the thing. Is it's a disrespect uh, of of the true name of the heavenly Father. So what you have down here with all these royal weddings and everything that's going on, you got people who are not of royalty. Yeah, that's creeping in, and really, <laughs> and that's what we have even here, present tense. 
you got people that's creeping in and leading captive silly women laden with sin because they want to hear something new uh, uh, that haven't been said before or don't anybody know anything about and you're talking to them about this stupendous divine panoramic vision that was brought to us in 1931 and, and, and all the things that go along with it is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. And if you're not talking about those things and bringing those things forward to share with the people then what are we coming to class for? So all the things that's being given to you, we talk about these royal weddings because we're using a Romans 1, 19 and 20. Well, the Romans 1, 19 and 20 said, take the natural things to point you to the spiritual. So if you understand these natural things that we are talking about, then Yahweh will and you will understand the spiritual things. So what we're looking at now, go back to uh, Matthew 24 and 1. But just pick, it, pick that up for me real quick, please. Matthew 24 and 1. Uh -huh. And Yahshua went out uh -huh. and departed from the temple. And his no, no. I want you to pick up, was it um, the marriage? Was it 24, 22, 22, 22 and 1? Yeah, 22 and 1. And Yahshua answered and spake unto them uh -huh. again uh -huh. by parable. Now, he was speaking to them about a parable. Now, a long time ago, <laughs> my mama, she would speak to us in parables. And for the longest time, you know, he was trying to figure out what she was talking about. So one day she told us, she said, uh, a fox was going across the railroad track. <laughs> and he had a beautiful tail. Beautiful tail. Hmm. She said, and he was just, you know, just strutting, just showing off his tail. She said, but he went to go across the railroad track. And instead of him just, you know, swinging the tail off the track, she said he bent down and with his head to pick up the tail and the, the, his tail and he lost his head. Mm -hmm. And we was like, he lost his head. You know, you try. So the, the parable was, don't lose your head over a piece of tail. That's what, that's, you know, that's what she was talking right, about. Right, but you know, when you first hear right, things, you know, you don't know what she's right. talking about. So it had to come to us, to be brought to us what she was talking about. You know, she would tell you things like the lady who found the snake, and the snake was all frozen. and she put the snake in her bosom and, and put it and you know, take it home and throw it out. Mm. But as her body temperature yes. warm that ice, then the snake thawed out and he bit her. Mm. And she lay in there dying. She said, Well, Mr. Snake, now why would you bite me since I'm helping? He said, You know the nature of a snake is to bite. <laughs> you know, these were parables. Mm. <laughs> but who understand the parables? The previous vessel talked about the disciples, the ones who was a student, the ones who was there, and they was with him day and night, you know, and he would take them aside and he would tell them and let them know what was this parable all about. So here he's talking in, in parable here, and you read over there, and the prophet said, and he didn't speak to them without speaking a parable. He was always speaking to them in parables. But then he would take them aside and he would tell them the true meaning of the parable. So what has happened down here now? Self same thing. Read please. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. Now it says it's like unto a certain king. Read. Which made a marriage uh -huh. for his son. Now he made a marriage for his son. Read. And sent forth his servants uh -huh. to call them that were bidden to mm -hmm. the wedding. Now, you will find a scripture over there where it says, Many are called, but few are chosen. So that's what you have here. You have people that Yahweh, through his son Yahshua, have called into the ministry of Yahshua the Messiah. And there are others who come in and by and by they say, Well, look, I don't, uh, 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 I'm tired. You know, I don't think this is for me. It's not this or it's not that. And then and at the end of the day, they go to other people and say, <coughs> say this or say that and, it's, and their expectation is to draw people away after themselves and that has always been going on but see the ones that's truly called into the ministry of Yahshua the Messiah they're not going anywhere you know <laughs> one of the, the aims uh, of this school and I was sharing it with my husband was talking and I was telling him I said what this teaching is about we have aims we, if there are goals and things that you are uh, uh, trying to 
aspire to and accomplish and understand those things. And one of them is, is to discern mm -hmm. and then avoid being deceived by things. You see what I'm saying? And it's really not an individual, as you know, an individual be. But we're talking about this satanic mystery. And we're talking about him because the previous vessel talks about spiritual wickedness in high places. Well, we're not talking about over in the White House and all that. The highest place, the previous vessel talked about this, is up here in the mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what it need a renovation. That's what need to be renovated. That's what need to be changed. So over there in Philippians, uh, the two and let's let's get Philippians two and about five, because see what has happened from the time that we were brought in here. Well, when we came in here, we came in here, Lord God and Jesus Christ. We didn't know, I didn't know anything about Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And did not know that I had been calling my creator, my heavenly father, out of his name the whole time. And then to get here and find out that there's no J for me to be hollering what Jesus have done for me. No J, no Jesus, no Jehovah. You know, and, and to learn those things. And then you said, well, at one time, you know, yeah, I was in the church and I was this and I was that. And then to come in here and find out that everything you was doing was totally wrong. And being able to admit to it, you see, and not be turned aside to those things ever again. Read, please. Philippians 2 and 5. Read. Let this mind be in you. Now, look, it said, let this mind be in you. Well, you know, you can change your mind. Mm -hmm. But what we are talking about is that let this spirit be in you. Read. Which was also in Yahshua the Messiah. Which was also in Yahshua the Messiah, read. Who, being in the form of Elohim, read, please. did not strive to claim for himself equality with Yahweh, read. but divested himself of his glory uh -huh. and took upon himself the form of a servant uh -huh. and was made in the likeness of men. Uh -huh. read. And being found in fashion and being as found a man, in fashion as a man, read. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. Read. And became obedient mm -hmm. unto death. Uh-huh. Even the death of the cross. So what you have is Yahweh. Get John 17 and 1. Yahweh in pure spirit. Yahweh. Elohim. Yahshua. Comes into this descriptive shape and form. That can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelations. And then Yahweh Elohim come all the way on down and manifest himself in the flesh. So he said, let this same spirit be in you that was also in Yahshua the Messiah. Okay? And it said he didn't strive. It wasn't no, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go. You know, it wasn't no, <coughs> oh, the one go, no, I'm not going. You go. No, I go. It's not like that. Because Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, these three are one. Read. John 17 and 1. Read. These words spake Yahshua uh -huh. and, and lifted up his eyes to heaven mm -hmm. and said. Now when you look here on this chart right here, people actually, you know, thinking he's looking up. But, you know, it's looking right within himself because he was Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua in a physical body. Read. These words spake Yahshua and uh -huh. lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, uh -huh. Father, Father, the hour is come. Uh -huh. Glorify thy son. He said, Glorify thy son, read. That thy son also may glorify thee. Read, please. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Now the Father have given the Son power over all flesh, read. That he should give eternal life uh -huh. to as many as thou hast given him. Read, please. And this is life eternal. He said, eternal. and this is life eternal. Speaking of himself. He said, this is life eternal. Read. That they might know that. Read, please. Thou only art the true That Yahweh Elohim. is the only true Elohim. And Yahshua the Messiah. Read. Whom thou hast sent. Whom thou hast sent. This is the self-same spirit. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. That's life eternal to know that. So what you have is Yahweh letting you know how he really is and how he actually exists. So when you talk about, look, we was talking about people change their mind and all of that, you know. But then we're talking about spirit. 
the transformation of your mind. When you look back here at the children of Israel, now Yahweh had told them, he said, as a matter of fact, he even uh, told Joseph before he took out the flesh. He said, I die in, Exodus, in, in Genesis, the 50th chapter, in about the 24th and 25th verse. He said, I die, but Elohim will surely visit you and bring you up out of this land. They were down here in the land of Egypt. He said, to a good land and a large. And when you read it, it talks about he made a, so it was a charge to let them know that you keep waiting because he was going to come and deliver you. They were down here in the land of Egypt. And he said, now look, he said, when you go. He didn't say if you go. He said, when you leave up out of the land of Egypt, you take my bones up with you. Why? Because all of this is pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. So he said, now look, when you get over there with David, it talks about you will not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So this self-same spirit, that these bones, these bones, <coughs> represent spirit. So he was brought up out of the land of Egypt when the children of Israel was brought up out of the land of Egypt. So Moses took Joseph's bones up out of there. So the children of Israel, they were down here. And the way that they got out of here is that Yahweh set up a Passover supper, a Passover feast for them. And he had told them, he said, take a lamb, a male of the first year, Take it out from the sheep or from the goat. He said, let, uh, and what they had to do is, they had to kill the lamb. Now this lamb had to be without spot and without blemish. They had to take it out on April the 10th. They had to hold it over to the 14th. And the whole assembly, not some of them, the whole assembly of the children of Israel had to kill that lamb. So when they killed that lamb, that lamb had to be, it had to be a certain way. It was a prescribed way. So those are, I don't like, I don't like that, I don't like that. No. He said this lamb had to be roast with fire. You had to have unleavened bread and bitter herbs. He said take that blood, strike the upper lintel, two side posts, dipping from a basin. He said then when you eat this lamb, they was eating in the night. He said let nothing of it remain until the morning. So whatever was remain or they didn't eat up, they had to burn it up. So when you look back here in the law, and it talks about how nothing could remain. Well, then when you come on down to Yahshua the Messiah, they couldn't go there and say, well, oh, here he is. When they went there, they said, why seek ye the living among the dead? Okay? So what you had, these children of Israel, they took that lamb. They partook of that lamb. He said, have your shoes on your feet, your loins girded, your staff in your hand. He said, because this is Yahweh's Passover. So at midnight, a cry was made. And these children of Israel was brought up out of the land of Egypt. They was led up out of this land of Egypt by this phenomenal cloud. And the previous vessel was talking about this cloud. Mm -hmm. Well, it was an angel in that cloud. And you see here on this uh, chart, that's when I said this vision, it had to be a vision. When you look at Exodus the 23rd, let's, let's get Exodus 23, 20 through 23. Because what we want you to know is, you're talking about something that's just, um, it is miraculous, it's panoramic, it's a divine pattern that Yahweh have given to a man for him to share with the world and let you know that he truly did have a divine vision straight from Yahweh himself. Read, please. Exodus 23 and 20. When? Read, please. Behold, I behold. Now, behold. Anytime you see behold, that means look or see. Behold, read. I send an angel. I send an angel, read. Before thee. Uh huh. To keep thee in the way. To keep thee in the way, read. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Read. Beware of him. Now, look, what, a, what is going on now? Yahshua have given us an angel, Yahshua himself to keep us in the way to make sure that we see and do those things that he have prepared that we might inherit eternal life you see he's already done done that you know read please and obey his voice he said be obedient you know and that's what it's down to you know to be obedient unto Joshua read provoke him not read please 
For he will not pardon your transgression. Uh -huh. Read on. For my name is in him. He said, my name is in him. My name is in him. So he said that where I am, there he may be also. So what is happening? We are in a physical body, but we are conscious of Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua. You see what I'm saying? He's made us conscious that, look, it's all Yahweh. It's all, everything. There's no, well, he's doing this over here, but he's not doing that over there. I think he, do, no, no, no. It's Yahweh that he might be all in all. So this is what is going on. So you had the children of Israel being led up out of the land of Egypt by this phenomenal cloud. Now, it was a cloud to them by day and a cloud pillar of fire by night. And that's how they were never in any darkness. So why, is, why you got to say they were never in any darkness? See, you look at this chart. Look at this chart. It said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he said, I am the light of the world. I am the light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. So you got him lighting the way back here, and he is the light of the world. So then they come to and through divided waters of the Red Sea. So what this, this first veil here going to bring you to the Red Sea, then you got a first veil here that's going to bring you up, up out of here. You see, all of these things that's going on here is going on in your physical body, going on in the tabernacle, going on in the world. You see, so then they come up out of the, uh, the Red Sea into the wilderness of Sinai. So you got them, the death of the Lamb, death, they are buried in the Red Sea. They resurrect out here in the wilderness, and they're out here for some 40 years. Now, when they come up out of the land of Egypt to and through the valley of water to the Red Sea, Yahweh Elohim, with the 19th chapter of Exodus, he was telling them about to clean themselves up and get themselves ready to present themselves. So you got two days, two and three days, to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And then they got three more days to clean themselves up and be ready for Yahweh Elohim to speak down to them. And they are standing, they are gathered around this mount. So this is the first congregation. And this is the marriage, like the previous vessel was talking about. He said, now look. So what Yahweh did, Yahweh spoke down to them. Well, what's the first thing he says to them? Exodus mm -hmm. 20 and 1. What's the first thing he got to say to them? And that's the whole thing. When you're brought into these classes, you, you keep your mind focused. The first aim of this school, it says to help you find and, and what? And know. <laughs> and know who? Yahweh our Elohim. As he really is and, and as he lives. actually exists. So that's what you're coming to school for. You know, you're coming up in to learn about your creator. Your life depends on you knowing your creator. And I'm not talking about this old weather beating tabernacle here. I'm talking about life after. You see what I'm saying? That's going to be with you and him in you forever. Read, please. And Elohim spake all these words, saying. Now, they are gathered around here. And it's the first congregation, first marriage. And Elohim, Yahweh Elohim did what? I am Yahweh thy Elohim. He spoke to them and he said, I am Yahweh thy Elohim. Read. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. I was the one who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Read. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Now look, the bondage is not physical. The bondage is in the heart and in the mind. Now, it's spiritual. So for him to bring us out of that bondage that we was bound down and bonded. You know, I mean, to, it's something to be steeped in ignorance about your creator. And for him to lift that veil, you know, and wash, wash and by the regeneration of your heart and your mind so that you will know your creator the way he really is and actually exists. So then you got this allegorical back here, you know, that's telling you about the true washing and regenerating. So the children of Israel, he, he's speaking to them and he says, I'm Yahweh, thy Elohim, who did what? Brought thee out of the I land I brought of you out of the land of Egypt. Read. Out of the house of bondage. Now you was in the house of bondage. Read. Thou shalt have no Elohim. Now the first thing he says to them is, thou shalt have what? No Elohim. No Elohim. Read. Before me. Before me. That's the first thing. He told them who he was, and he told them what he required. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the same thing that's going on down here now from a spiritual standpoint. It's not about the other vessel that's sitting up in it. It's like I was sharing with a vessel earlier. I said, this is not a social event to come to class. I said, we're coming to class to obtain a knowledge and understanding of our creator in truth and reality. And first thing is that Yahweh is spirit. That cuts the natural right on out. He said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So there can't be no lying and going on. It's that in spirit and in truth. So look, this is what we're talking about. These things here are allegorical. These things here were physical. We're looking at these natural things to point you up to the spiritual. And that's what's going on is to help you find and truly know him. Now when Yahweh Elohim got through speaking to these people, then it says, uh, get over there, Exodus uh, 24, and start at, um, I think it's 24 and, and, and about 8, 7 or 8, somewhere. And he took the book of the covenant? Yes, that's what, uh-huh. Okay, that's Exodus 24, 7. Read, please. And he took the book of the covenant. Now, he is Moses. Took the book of the covenant, read. And read in the audience of he, the people. Now he read in the audience of the people, read. And they said, uh -huh. all that Yahweh has said we uh -huh. will do. We will do it. And be obedient. And we're going to be obedient. Read, please. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people mm -hmm. and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which Yahweh has made with you concerning all these words. Uh-huh. Then went up Moses. Okay, hold it. Okay. So now he made a covenant with them. So now when people get married, they make a covenant. Mm -hmm. And they go on to say, do you take this yeah. man, so-and-so, yeah. so-and-so, to be your, what, lawful, wedded wife, wife or husband? Uh -huh. And they stand there and they say, I, I do. do. And then he asked the other one. Right. So if you want to back out, that'll uh -huh. be, don't say you do That's when you right. don't. And That's see, right. that this is the whole thing. Because, see, all of these things, it, it's, it's just telling us about our creator. You know, so then what you look at, now they had the name Yahweh. Okay? Now, what you what you find, I don't have time to go in there. Okay, but what you find is, is that they agreed to it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the first congregation, the first marriage. Okay, but now what you're looking at is you come on down the line, according to the law, if you was married to somebody, right? You couldn't be married to nobody else because you would be a what? Uh, you would be an adult. Right. You would be a, an a, a, a adulterous a woman, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all uh, down through the ages and dispensation, you had them marriage like Yahweh. You know, that was the name that they was given. Okay, but now what you have is after his death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of one Yahshua the Messiah, then what? You're married to Yahshua. That's your true husband now, you see? And that's the son. And it talks about how he made the father made a marriage for the son. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on now. Now get, get me easy. Go to 46th chapter and around about the uh, 46 is down by the end of it. Um, okay, Ezekiel 46. 46, 16. Because, see, we do have an inheritance. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not talking about something natural. We're talking about Spiritual. They said to inherit eternal life. Eternal life is, is Yahshua, you see. And that's the word of truth. You know, and, and people really, they don't even get that part. The word of truth. Is it because the word of truth, the world cannot receive. Read Ezekiel 46 and 16. Read. Thus said Yah Yahweh. Now thus said Yah Yahweh. Read. If the prince gave a gift unto any of his sons. Now look. <laughs> If the prince gave a gift to any of his sons, read. The inheritance the thereof. The inheritance thereof. Shall be his son. It shall be his son. Read. It shall be their possession by inheritance. It's going to be the possession by inheritance. Well, what is the gift? The gift is eternal life in a glorified state. Right. Read. But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants. Uh -huh. Now, you got a difference. Mm -hmm. you, you get there's a difference between a son mm -hmm. and, a servant. and a servant. Read, please. Then it shall be his to the year of liberty. It's going to be a time that it's going to be taken mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. It's just for a season. But we are talking about eternally. 
Say so read. After it shall return to the prince. After what is going to return to the prince. Read. But his inheritance shall be his sons for them. His inheritance going to be his sons for them. Read. Moreover, the prince. The prince. Shall not take of the people's inheritance uh -huh. by oppression mm -hmm. to thrust them out of their possession. Read. But he shall give his sons. Now he going to give his sons. Inheritance. Inheritance. Out of his own possession. Out of his own possession. Right. That, that's right. the whole point. Right. He's given us an inheritance out, out of his, his own, own possession. possession. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to work for nothing. We ain't had to work for nothing. He said, take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn, Learn of me. Mm -hmm. And that's what he has given us to do. And I'm truly thankful he didn't ask you to pay nothing but pay attention. Mm -hmm. That's all. You know, and when you're reading even the transcripts and the textbook and everything in the, the, the vision and everything, it said pay strict attention. Pay strict attention. May I have your undivided attention. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what it's all about is to look at these natural physical things. They are pointing us up to spiritual things. So when, we, when we're looking at these uh, different things with psychologically that's affecting us, we know that that's a damnable spirit in a physical body, you know, that's just swaying, you know, and that, well, you can do this and you can do that. You know, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? I was talking to a vessel some time ago. I said, next time he come telling you about killing yourself, I said, you tell him, go shoot you. I said, go tell him to do it. Don't be coming to you telling you stuff. But they have, he have them in derision and in depression. Right. And like the vessel said, no way out. And that's what, when he catch you alone mm -hmm. and, and, and by yourself, mm -hmm. and you are so stressed out, you're vulnerable mm -hmm. right. to that damnable spirit. And here he come. I said, and that's his whole thing, is to kill you. Right. He cannot have life. Right. He does not have life to right. give. And right. he's trying to take it from mm -hmm. any and everybody mm -hmm. he possibly can. Right. I said, that's his whole job. I said, he is death and he's bound. Death, hell, in the grave. He don't have nowhere to go but here. I said, but there is a deliverance in Yahshua the Messiah to take my yoke upon you and you learn of me. He said, I'm gentle, I'm lowly in heart, and you shall find rest Onto your soul. And with those words, I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. about the passing of uh, Sister Eunice uh, Elroy's mm -hmm. husband and um, I have the information that she sent back. Um, Jensen was saying that she shipped the body home a few days ago so everything is going to be in Chicago but I will uh, have it written on the board for our record. Okay, uh, this concludes our spiritual session. And we'll be back again. <laughs> We, we hold side studies here in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, Sundays, 11 to 1 o'clock. Our doxology, we, we take it from the book of Jude, the last two chapters. Last two verses. Last two verses. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I guess we'll go a different route going back. Yeah, because they show sure us slow by removing. Thank you.